Welcome to your 18th Java tutorial. Today we are going to look at methods and specifically we're going to look at void and return. Now we've all seen that void keyword here and you guys are probably wondering what that means. Well, it's pretty simple. It basically means that you're not going to return a value. So that's all you need to remember about void. You're not returning anything. And return, well that's pretty obvious too. You're just going to return a value. So those are uh, opposites. and. So if you have void in your method, you're not going to return anything. And if you return something, you have to use the return keyword. And I'll show you that now. We're going to use two classes here that I've created, a hamburger joint and food. We're going to create our food class template over here, and we're going to serve the food in our restaurant, hamburger joint. All right, so let's go ahead and create a variable. And it's going to be a string variable. And we're going to call this food A. Now, if you remember in the previous tutorial when I talked about access modifiers, I indicated it's a good habit to make your variables private unless you have a really good reason to make it public. So let's go ahead and start making some of these uh, private. And remember what I said is we access these then through our public methods. So it's just a good habit to do that. So let's go ahead and create a constructor. And remember, uh, your constructor name has to match your class name. Uh, if you haven't watched my constructor tutorial, you probably should. I think it's number 16 or something. You should go back and watch that. And we're going to go ahead and pass in a string here. We're going to call this string A. And then, of course, we need our famous squiggly brackets. And here is where we're going to give this constructor a value. And we're just going to put that. And if you remember, uh, we don't actually assign the value here. This constructor gets built or used when we use it as an object over here. And we will actually assign the value over here. If you remember, we don't assign it here. So this is kind of a fake value, if you remember. Now let's actually create the methods that we're going to do for this tutorial to explain how return and void work. So let's go ahead and make our method public. Remember, we want our method public so we can access it from our main program. And that way we can get to our private variable because remember, this method will have access to this private variable because it's in the same class. And we're going to return a string value. So we'll type in string here. And we're going to name this method getFood. And we need parenthesis to declare that this is a method. And then we're going to return, and there we use the return keyword because we're going to be returning a value here. And we're going to be returning this value right here, food A. So we're going to say food A. In other words, we're going to be returning whatever this value is determined to be. When we use the constructor over here, we'll put our value in, and it'll be passed in over here. And then this will return it. Okay. Now, you'll notice if we put void here, we're going to get some IntelliSense saying, hey, you can't do that. So if you remember, I said these two don't go together. When you're saying, when you put void here, there is no return value. So we'd have to get rid of this. But we do want a return. We want a return of a string. So we go ahead and type that in, and everything's fine again. So let's go ahead and put in a comment here. So use return when a value is returned. Pretty self-explanatory. OK, and let's go ahead and set up our void method now. And we use the keyword void. And we're going to call this method system print. And we're just going to do a system print of this value right here. So we'll go s out. Now you can do s out and then tab. And that gets you system.out.print a lot faster than having to type that whole thing out. And we're just going to put in the variable here, which is food A. And let's put in some comments too. Void only if nothing is returned. So nothing is being returned. We're just doing a system print of this value. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our program now. So let's declare our object. And we're going to use this class, food. So we specify that right here. And we're going to call this serving. Let's call this serving A. And we're going to say this is a new object. And we're going to go ahead and call, call our constructor. And since we said over here that this is going to be a string, we're going to call this a hamburger. That's what we're going to be serving. OK, so now we need to invoke both of our methods that we defined over here. So first, let's go ahead and work against this method, the method that returned a value here. And we're going to go ahead and do a s out. I like to call that s out now. <laughs> 
and we're going to specify serving a hit dot and here's where we see our method get food now remember since this is public we can access this from our program over here so get food and if we run this we get hamburger there you go and let's go ahead and call our void method over here now so we'll do serving a dot and there it is system print and we'll go ahead and run this and we should get two hamburgers and we did so you'll notice this one's a little bit different since we were doing our print here just a straight print we didn't actually have to do a system print before this we're just calling this method which is already doing this print and again this method returns nothing it's just doing a print of this value whereas this one this get food method that we defined right here is actually passing through this value a value is getting returned here which is hamburger so that's how this works it's pretty simple um, now there are some nuances with void you can actually put in arguments in here but we're not going to get into that in this tutorial I will show you that later but you already understand 95 percent of this by just understanding that a method either returns something or it does not return something at that basic level you already understand 90 percent of it in the next tutorial we will discuss the keyword static we will finally get to that so I'll see you guys then